what's so, up? So is it Christmas? Are you opening your present? It's Christmas. <laughs> no, we uh, we bought an engine stand for the 392. Yeah, over there. Right over there. So I'm figuring out how to put it together and uh, read directions. Ordering? I am now. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So while Randy and Sam work on getting this engine stand set up, I'm gonna start Randy tearing down. No <laughs> oh, he'll help eventually. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Ma maybe. Yeah. Perpetuate the myth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, while they're doing that, I'm gonna work on tearing down this new engine that I've got. So this is a 2.3 liter from a Focus RS. Now, obviously, there's a lot of things missing from this. There's no intake manifold, but whatever. I don't care. It's just a big plastic intake manifold. There's no exhaust manifold either with the turbo. I guess, well, technically there is an exhaust manifold. It's an integrated exhaust manifold. So this is the manifold. It's part of the head. Coolant can run through here so they can run more boost, hotter exhaust gas temperatures. Um, the reason for this weird port design here is that this is for a um, dual uh, tw twin scroll turbocharger. So cylinders one and four go to one scroll, two and three go to another scroll. This thing is also missing high pressure fuel pump would have been here and there would have been a vacuum pump here for all the accessories that need a vacuum like brake booster stuff like that fortunately i don't really care about all that stuff missing because the important thing when it comes to this engine is the head gasket for the first year that these engines were out they had problems with the head gaskets blowing on them and eventually in 2017 ford issued a big recall for all of them like in europe i think they had guys go out in vans and find every focus rs they could and replace the head gasket now this engine, it was developed from the 2.3 liter Mazda engine that was in the Mazda Speed. So if you're watching this and thinking, man, those, uh, those ports sure look similar and uh, so does the block and uh, where the oil pump is. Yeah, this is the, uh, the grandson of that engine. So they had a problem with cylinder number one as well as replaced under warranty. So I don't know exactly what the problem is. Most likely a compression issue. So we're gonna find out. I'm gonna get this valve cover off. It's so crazy how much stuff is the same as my Mazda speed engine. Yep. Like, so much stuff is the same. I didn't realize it was basically the same. It's basically yeah. the same. Anyway, nice, good timing, too. Very tight. So, this engine was originally supposed to get little roller finger followers instead of be buckets pushing down on the, uh, the, the valves. But the. Uh, Program team at Ford decided that it cost too much money, so they didn't go with it. Huh. So this yeah. almost had an even more radical head design. Ah! Key thing to note is that as soon as the timing comes loose, since it is not pinned, you cannot turn the end over. Whee! Oh, that comes oh. Up so easy. Yeah. Wow. It's not even keyed. They kept that. Yeah. They didn't key it. Just like the Mazda Speed. Which means there's going to be a friction washer yeah. in there. You ever heard of friction washers, Sam? No. They are this little paper-thin piece of metal. It looks like a washer, but again, it's paper-thin. And they cover it with this very rough friction material. I think some of it may even be like, 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 diamond, yeah, like industrial diamond or something. Yeah. And they do that, and then they just clamp the shit out of it instead of key weighing things. You torque everything with it in the right spot. And that's what holds everything yeah, together. Right. Power. This is exactly, exactly like the Mazda Speed, obviously. I mean, that same off-center same oil pump. Yep, oil pump's the same offset, except this one has PVT on intake and exhaust. The Mazda Speed engines only have it on the intake. Torque everything down. And, and they use another friction washer against the back of the crank. So that's not keyed again, that's just, I really wish this was keyed. So there wasn't even like a friction washer in that. No, uh, at one point they stopped putting friction washers on yeah. the cam gears. So I know they, I know they were doing that, that with the Focus STs too, because bizarre. somebody, somebody posted on the forums at one point. It, it, it actually happened during the Mazdas. Oh, and three versus four screws huh. on it. So the the four screw goes on the exhaust intake. Oh, yeah, four screw goes on the intake. Yeah. 
I'll have to look up and see because if these are if the RS camshafts are more potent than the ST, these are probably valuable to mm -hmm. somebody. There's one difference from the Mazda speeds. I don't think the Mazda speeds had the torques. No. I think they were regular bolts. Yeah. Yeah, and these are the buckets that the cams. Yeah, so the cam so, hits this and that pushes down the valve. So on the Hondas, you can adjust this. There's like an adjuster that allows you to set your lash. On the Fords, in order to set the lash, you put it in here, put it all together, measure like, your lash, figure out how far off it is, pull it apart, and put a different bucket shim, in there. Like a bucket or a shim in there. Some of them are buckets, some are shims. Usually they're labeled what, say there's a what thickness. Say. What's yeah. it say? Like N382. 382. So it's a 0 0.382 thickness. Should be everything holding the head on. All right, take you guys in there. Better look. So one of the cool things about the Focus RS is that because it's direct injection, they've got these very fancy cupped, dished pistons right here. And basically, this is where the injector is. So when it injects, it, it hits the center of this cup and sprays, turns around and sprays right back, and uh, fills out the cylinder. It's seems pretty. Pretty good so far. Yep. I mean, just kind of dusty, but I mean, it turns smooth. Let's get the light and see how the bores look. Yeah. No, there's still, there's still, there's still a lot of crosshatch. I don't see anything wrong with the valves on this. They all look like they're seated. I don't yep, see any light. No light coming through. So there's no. Granted, they can't see the exhaust, but they look like they're seated pretty well. I mean, they're they're not bent. That's they look fine. They're all basically the right color. I mean, so this is this car was either made after July 2017, or it was part of a, the recall that went out for the head gasket problems. Because I, I can tell that it's because it has holes here for the, in the head gasket. So when this car was originally produced, they made a change to the block, which they have right here and hard to see, but down there is another hole. These are cross drilled holes. That's how cool it can get into this, what's called the bore bridge here. When this was originally being designed, and I believe it's this way in like the Mustangs, two threes, they did what's called a cross cut. So they came across here on the surface here with like a saw blade and made a cross cut so the coolant could come up, travel along here and go in this hole. But what happened is that they didn't make that same change when they went to the cross drilled. They didn't make the change in the gasket. So there was still the slot here where there would have been for the, the cross cut one. And so coolant would just deadhead in here because it would be in here, it wouldn't get to this hole, it would just be stuck here, it would deadhead and then like it would boil and blow out the head gasket. So that's why this one now has these holes in here because it's got the it's got the drills instead of the the cut. Yeah, so right. the drill was done to the block, but somehow that didn't get communicated to the the head gasket team. Is what the story that I've been told. Huh. So people say that it's the like they put the Mustang's head gasket in there by accident. I don't think it's that simple. So is this the good or bad? This is a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. So, so starting if this has holes in the head gasket. Yeah, and that's correct. And then also, so you're saying the early ones would have had a slot? The early... Like the, the little cut that they so make here sometimes? Before, at some point, the design of this engine and the version that went in the Mustang split. And for some reason on the RS, they went with the cross drilled. So there's one drill that comes in like this, another one in the coolant channel goes in like this. That's on every RS? Yes, that is on okay. every RS and they meet in the middle of the cylinder of the bore bridge area. That's how cool it can come up here, go in, cool, and then come up into the head. Mm -hmm. But for the first year that this was out, it still had a head gasket design that wanted that, or that oh. had the, the, the slot there for the cross so they, cut. they had a head gasket with a slot here, yeah. even though there was no slot. So that and so slot coolant would, would come up, coolant. it would sit in this slot, it couldn't reach this hole, and it would just, uh, it would boil inside the slot. 
and then on the head gasket, then it, would, it would blow out the head gasket eventually. Okay. Wow. Interesting. See, that's the cool thing. That's the kind of cool stuff you get knowing a Ford engineer or somebody who's got insider knowledge. Yep. He's, I work there. He's legit. <laughs> he's legit. He he's a professional. So don't be scared of ever buying a, a Focus RS. Just make sure that if it's one of the earlier ones that it's had this done to it. Or, I mean, if, yeah, so if, like, if you get to that point, do it yourself. Yeah. It's not that hard. July 2017 is when this head gasket was in production. So, so check your build dates. But other than that, I mean, this engine does not look that bad. Somebody might actually be able to use this. Nothing like shiny in the pan, it's just goo. Yep, yeah, just uh, sludge. You will get a certain amount of sludge in a normal engine. That's that's normal. Plastic oil pickup going to your chain driven oil pump. This right here, you know what that is, Sam? Not a clue. That's just that what is a balance shaft. So this is set up to take out the uh, vibrations. These two balance shafts, they're geared. They're driven off of this, the, the crankshaft through a giant gear that's pressed onto the crankshaft. And these two balance shafts, they, they turn like this. And they're basically, they're, they're, they're half. So like, it's like a shaft, but they machined out half of it. So it's only balanced on, so it's only weighted on one side. And it, it goes like this pretty much for as far as the weight. My Civic had one of these and we took it out. That's why it rattles so much, among yeah. other reasons. <laughs> the more you know. Side. Oh, yep. Yeah. That will uh, that'll definitely do it. So was this which which one was this? Cylinder four. Okay, so this wasn't like a thrust bearing one, right? Yeah, it, it spun this bearing. You can see how it's up a little bit this way yeah. and it's sticking down. So it, it, well, I don't know if that happened when I popped it out. No, no, no. no. It, this this spun this bearing. Blade this out. That's wild. Be careful. These are very sharp. Yeah. But yeah. It spun. Spun four. Oh right wow. There. Yeah. Went this way. Like getting my hands dirty, you guys. Dirty. <laughs> Is that all one piece? Yep. Yeah, it was called a girdle. Honda had one. It's a, it's a four cylinder thing. It makes it a lot stronger. Yeah, Instead of nice. having a bunch of individual bearing caps for the mains, it's all one yeah. thing. Oh. Yep. Mint. Neat. Clean. It says Edsma. Yes. <laughs> EJ7. EBA. Edsma. Yank it out of there. Chris, be careful with my new crank for my <laughs> other engine. Dude, look at those oil squares. Yep. <laughs> They're like rounded. It's funny. Cool. I'm gonna get my other crank. <laughs> Ooh, that is so, yeah. All right, so here's a comparison. So this is the Focus RS crankshaft, and this is a Mazda Speed 3 crankshaft. They're identical. They're very, much, very similar. Kinda. This one right here is very pointy. This one's a little bit more rounded. You can yeah, see the no thing. This is more angled and that one's like rounded. But as far as I know, I'm pretty sure this can be used in replacement of this. They've got the same, same distances for all of this stuff, it looks like. I'm pretty sure it's the same throw and I'm pretty sure everything else is the same. So I might be using that crank. All right, that's a, that's a Focus RS engine. Yeah. There it is, all the parts. We did make a nice big pile, didn't we? Yeah, yes. pile of parts. Look at this cute little crank sprocket. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>
Neat. All right. I'm dehydrated.